Hello everyone, this is Cross, and let's continue with part 3 of our Roll20 5th edition campaign setup for pro subscribers. So, what we need to move on to is the Group Initiative API. So let's take a look at that. Group Initiative, this is the API screen. And Group Initiative's basic functionality is to roll initiative for your creatures. It saves you a lot of time. Normally you would have to, uh, let's go to our campaign. Normally we'd have to click, roll initiative, click, roll initiative, click, roll initiative, or, or anything. There's not really a good way if we just kind of click this. It doesn't roll initiative for everything that we have selected. Group initiative will allow us to highlight everything and roll initiative for everything that we have highlighted. It saves you a lot of time. So when you say roll initiative, your players can roll their individual initiatives and you can roll for all your creatures in, in the combat. We're going to go ahead and figure that out. So let's take a look at our screen. Now, of course, with any API, the best way to get familiar with it is to take a look at the instructions that the author has provided. Just going to walk you through a few key points. First is your exclamation group initiative command. If we can't, just a little bit. So this is the command we're going to be using mostly. And then to set up, we're going to need a couple of commands. First, the delete group and the add group. I'm going to show you how to do this. So all you have to do is worry about using this one command. Another command that's very useful is the group initiative clear button. So that is basically what we are going to worry about doing. Let's go to our campaign. The right zoom level. Excellent. All right, so we have our initiative button here. This initiative button is tied directly to the character sheet. The character sheet tells us that our dexterity for this creature is plus zero, and our initiative is zero. So when we roll, when we hit the initiative button, it is as if we are rolling initiative. Let's pull the turn order up. Hit initiative for this creature, you will see it rolled a 12. Let's take a look at our chat and see what sort of detail this is. Bring the chat down a little so you can see. All right, it rolled a 12. It has a plus zero. We see that it has a plus zero initiative. Everything worked fine. Great. So what happens though when we use group initiative? So we're going to go ahead and clear our turn order table. And we're going to highlight everything. And the command that we are using is exclamation group init. Now I'm going to hit enter. Notice what we have here. We have a lot of high numbers. It has a plus 10 bonus. It has a plus 10 bonus. And so we rolled a 10. We got out a plus 10. That equals 20. The swarm of bats rolled a natural 20 and has a plus 15. So what's, what is going on here? This, this is not how D&D initiative works. Well, a little bit of investigation. Let's go into the, into our creature here. Creature rolled a 14 and added a 10. If you notice his dexterity is a 10. So what it's doing is it's taking that D20 roll and adding its dexterity. That's not what we want to have happen. That's not how D&D works. So we need it to get it to translate to the plus zero. There's a way to do this. Let's go ahead and clear our initiative table. And what we are going to do is type in, with no tokens selected, our group initiative. With no tokens selected, you get the setup screen. What we are looking at, the reason why it's using the 10 instead of a zero, and the other dexterity scores, if you notice, if you remember the swarm of bats had a 35, it rolled a natural 20. Well, the swarm of bats has a 15 dexterity. 
It's getting this information from this bonus stat group's dexterity current. The current dexterity of the swarm of bats is 15. So it thinks that's what you want. Not what we want. So we are going to go to our setup screen. And we see where it says group initiative delete group. And it wants, wants some sort of value. We're just going to copy that straight off. And the value that it wants, it wants the delete group. The bonus stat groups screen is here. We are trying to delete group one. It says that this is number one, so that's the group we are going to delete. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Once I do that, I am going to deselect the token I have selected, otherwise it'll try to roll initiative. You're just going to kind of pull that screen back up and look, and bonus stat groups no longer has any values listed. So we need to add a group. Again, I encourage you to go back to this. Now this screen could get a little confusing. What does it want us to say? All right. I'm going to go to our chat. We're just going to kind of look at this group. Initiative, we are putting in the two hyphens, add hyphen group. This is the base command here, this, this part. Now it wants the adjustment. So we are going to put in the two hyphens that it wants. We're going to use this stat hyphen D and D. I'm just going to cut and paste that straight over. And it says, this is where you'd put the stat. I want dexterity. So I'm just going to type in dexterity. If you leave dexterity where it's at, it's going to use the dexterity current. Uh, it tells you this. Talks about max current. Um, it's to specify either you want the max or the current attribute. Um, and it defaults to current. Current is fine. It just want, it just uses your current dexterity. If your current dexterity is a 20, it'll give you a plus 5. If it's a 10, it'll give you a plus 0. Um, but it'll it'll make sure and it's whatever, whatever your dexterity is currently at. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter in our chat. Notice our stat dash D and D dexterity current is now a stat group. Let's verify this. Again, with no tokens selected, exclamation group initiative, we go to our bonus stat groups, and indeed, our stat d, &D is is in there. We have now set up group initiative. I'm going to highlight our tokens. We are going to group initiative. There we go. We notice one of our creatures rolled a natural 20, and there is his plus zero bonus that we would expect from the creature. His initiative bonus is in fact a zero. Our swarm of bats has a plus two bonus. Verifying that, 15 dexterity is definitely a plus two initiative bonus. Excellent. Now we can roll initiative. But typing this out every time is not really the way that we want to go. So what we're going to do is create a macro. This is the macro that I have made. I just named it initiative role. You can name it whatever. But you can type in your exclamation group initiative and just serve this as a macro. And if you want, you can um, show you the full you can click initiative role, put it in the bar and then it will serve, you can have a, uh, a button down at the bottom where you can highlight all your creatures, go ahead and hit this button, and it will roll. Now the other macro I have is initiative clear. And I got this command again from our, from our sheet here. And it's exclamation group dash initiative clear. I'm going to have all these commands that, that I have put in macros, I'm going to have them in the description below if you want to go ahead and check that and copy and paste them into your own game. 
um, initiative clear. When we hit this, it just simply clears out our initiative block and closes our our uh, our initiative tracker. Uh, if you have the initiative tracker open, it'll just kind of sit there and hover on your player's screens. But if you if you get in the habit of after combat, go ahead and hitting this button. It'll go ahead and remove all the initiatives and close the box at the same time, serving as a that this fight is indeed over. It's it's finished. So, again, hover over our creatures, hit the initiative roll button. We have our initiatives. We can go through them. Our player can roll his own initiative. We can kind of go through the initiatives once the fight's done. Hit initiative clear, it closes the block, and we can keep on going. So, this is the long and short of our group initiative set up, how to create a couple of macros for it, and how to set it up specifically for 5th edition D&D. This is how I set it up in my games, and it's worked fine for me for several years now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are enjoying this guide, go ahead and please subscribe for more. It And leaving a like on it would help others locate this video and this guide thereby enabling them to kind of have some of the support and help that they need to start up their own campaigns with their pro subscriptions thank you for watching